Hello. Today, we'll be learning about the topic of the ear and noise. Now, to get started, I want you to think about some objects that make really loud noises. Look on the screen for some inspiration. We've got a plane, we've got a party, some sort of gig here. We've got a guy on a pneumatic drill. We've got some other ones here as well. What do you reckon is the loudest out of all of them? And what do you think the difference between noise and sound is? Well, sound is the word that we use to describe the things that we hear. Noise is the word that we use to describe unwanted sound. Here are some keywords for you to remember during this lesson. I suggest you pause the video here for a moment and copy these down, as they'll help you throughout the lesson when I go into some more detail. To start with, we have the eardrum, this cone-shaped membrane that separates outer and middle ear. Next, we have the cochlea, cochlea, the bone in the inner ear that converts sound waves into electrical signals. And finally, we have the ossicles, ossicles, which are very small bones in the middle ear. Our learning objective today is to evaluate how the ear works and how hearing damage can occur. To do that, we have to identify parts of the ear and explain how we hear. Now, for the IAG segment, we have humans with hearing impairment rely on hearing aids to assist in their hearing. An audiologist is a healthcare professional who is trained to evaluate hearing loss and related disorders. The average salary for an audiologist is £33,691. Now, lots of people have hearing difficulties, myself included. I have something called tinnitus where I've listened to too much music and have actually experienced some hearing damage, and now I have a constant ringing sound in my ears. Have a think about the question on the screen. Why do we see lightning before we hear thunder? Think about what your eyes are detecting, and think about what your ears are detecting. What are they actually picking up? Well, there's an important answer here. Your eyes are seeing light, which travels at extremely high speeds whereas your ears are picking up sound, which travels at a slower speed, which is why you see it before you hear it, because you see the light from the lightning reaching you before you hear the sound of it reaching you. It has to catch up. Think of the last time you saw or heard lightning. What happened? Well, as I mentioned in the slide before, you see the light from the lightning before you hear it, which is why the lightning seems to happen before you hear the sound of the thunder. Now, if we measure the time between seeing the lightning bolt and hearing the thunder with a stopwatch, we can calculate just how far away the lightning strike was. Now, let's say that the time in between seeing and hearing the lightning is two seconds. If we use the formula distance is equal to speed times time, then we can calculate that a bolt of lightning that happens two seconds before we hear the thunder traveling at the speed of sound which is 340 meters per second equals 680 meters now together we'll be going through the parts of the ear and how they all come together to let you hear sound now ears collect sounds and turn them into messages for the brain to interpret they also send information to us about balance now it's important to remember that there are three main parts of the ear. We have the outer ear, we have the middle ear, and we have the inner ear. Now the outer ear includes the pinna, which is this bit here, and it also includes the ear canal, which is this bit here. Now these two parts act together to gather sounds and focus them towards the middle ear. Now the middle ear takes these sounds and turns them into vibrations. So as we can see in the top right diagram there, or the GIF there, sounds are entering the ear through the outer ear and striking the eardrum, which is this section here. This whole part here is shaped like a drum. So the sound waves hit this. This is called the eardrum. Now the eardrum, moves when these sounds hit it, it vibrates. And that causes these three little bones here to work together to also move, which we can see down here. So those three bones working together, they are called ossicles, ossicle bones. 
So these bones are vibrating and send vibrations further into the inner ear. So the inner ear takes these vibrations and turns them into messages for the brain. And the inner ear has this thing called the cochlea, which is this spiral looking thing here. So we have vibrations coming from the ossicle bones. They are making this whole section of the inner ear vibrate. And we have the cochlea, this spiral thing, which is actually full of liquid. So when these vibrations happen along here, they make the liquid inside the spiral move as well. And these cause lots of little hairs inside to move inside that liquid. And they create nerve signals, which are then sent down this nerve to the brain and allow us to process what we are hearing. Now this part here, this kind of tube, it's called the eustachian tube. And now this maintains pressure both on the inside and outside of the eardrum. So just to recap, we have the outer ear, which has the pinna in the ear canal. This channel sounds into the middle ear, which is where the eardrum and the ossicles are located. They vibrate, sending messages into the inner ear, where the cochlea then makes the fluid inside it move small hairs, which then send signals to the brain, which allow us to hear. Why are loud noises dangerous? Now we can see on the left here, a load of people partying some sort of gig or a show or a party or something. Now, one of the things that we can guarantee will be there is loud music and loudspeakers. Now, while music can really liven up a party, it can also have damaging consequences. Take a moment to just think about what this might be and think about what the difference between noise and sound is. Well, it should be pretty obvious that standing right next to a speaker is gonna be pretty painful because it's just so loud. Now, the difference between noise and sound, which we covered earlier, is that sound is what we hear and noise is unwanted sound. Noise is measured in something called a decibel. So noise is measured in decibels. We can see some levels of decibels on screen here. Now, are any of these surprising to you? Look how loud the speakers at a rock concert are. They are literally the second loudest thing on this list. Now, is it really that surprising that they can damage your hearing if they are as loud as a thunderclap? Hearing damage. Repeated exposure to loud noises can lead to hearing loss through one of three ways. How do you think the pictures below can lead to hearing loss? Take a look at what they actually are. We have a ruptured eardrum, so a hole in the eardrum caused by loud noises. Now on the right, we have the little hair bundles which you can find inside the cochlea, the little things that move inside liquid and send signals to the brain. You can see on the left some healthy ones, and then on the right, we can see some that have been damaged by noise. So hearing damage. Here we have a ruptured eardrum. On the left, you can see a normal one. And on the right, you can see where the rupture is or the hole is. If the skin of the eardrum gets broken, leaving a hole, then it will not vibrate properly, which leads to hearing dress. Think about a real drum. If you are sat in front of a drum and there's a hole in it and you try and hit it, is it gonna make a sound properly? No. So some more hearing damage. We can see in picture A, we have some healthy hairs, some cochlear hairs. So these are the tiny little hairs inside the cochlea where that fluid is in that spiral image. So we have some healthy ones on the left. And then on the right, we have some that have clearly been damaged after being subjected to some loud noise. So if the hairs in the cochlea are damaged, they will not vibrate properly inside the cochlea. So nerve impulses cannot be sent down the nerve. So think about the picture on the left. Those things, if they were inside a fluid and the fluid was moving, you'd expect those hairs to be able to move quite well. Uh, in picture B, you can see that some of them appear to have been broken off. They're at an angle. They just don't quite look healthy, do they? And those aren't going to be moving very well. And therefore, they're not going to be sending as many or as strong signals down to the brain. Earwax. Now, earwax can be both good and bad for your ears. Sort the statements below into positives and negatives. 
pause the video now to do that. So what do we think is a positive from earwax? How about this one? Contains chemicals which prevent infection. So the earwax in your ear has got loads of different chemicals in it and it's designed to keep your ears from getting infected. They have things that keep bacteria at bay. So what do we think another positive is How about this one? Prevents the skin of the ear canal from becoming irritated. So just think about if your skin's really dry or if it's irritated, you know, sometimes having quite kind of soft or moist skin can be beneficial. And that's one of the things that earwax does for you. It just kind of soothes the insides of the ears. Now, if we need to pick some negative aspects of earwax, we can see that there are two left. We've got too much earwax blocks sounds from reaching the eardrum. Now we can see in this picture, we've got quite a big blob of earwax here just by the eardrum. Now it is actually possible for there to be so much earwax that it completely builds up and can block the ear canal. And now obviously that's really going to put a blocker on any sound waves that are trying to come into the ear. They're not going to be able to affect or really reach the eardrum properly. So that can actually affect your hearing. Now finally we have this one here. It does not look nice. I'm sure we've all seen what earwax can look like and it's not particularly pretty. But there are a couple of other things um, about earwax. You know, every people uh, produce different amounts. It can have different smells. It can have different colors, different consistencies. But overall, earwax is supposed to be there. Our body produces it to kind of look after our ears.